If you like square format images, black and white film, then this is the video for you. Welcome, my name is Stephen and this is my landscape photography channel. In today's video we're going to be creating some beautiful square format black and white images with my medium format Mamiya 6 film camera and Ilford Pan F Plus 50 film. I really hope you enjoy this video. So I found this beautiful park here in the centre of Rotorua in New Zealand and it's got all this geothermal activity going on and as you can see behind me there's this uh, thermal pool and around the edges of the thermal pool there are these uh, dead trees, dead branches, dead bushes and with all this steam and mist I just think they make fantastic subjects, um, you know a minimal type subject which you know is right up my street and with all the steam surrounding them, it's, uh, it's looking really beautiful through the camera lens. Well that was a complete lie. The viewfinder on a rangefinder camera does not look through the lens. The image looked beautiful through the viewfinder. Anyway, I would like to interrupt this video for a second to say I hope you're having a great week and I really hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, then please give it a thumbs up. I'd also like just to quickly mention that I've set myself a goal for this year to achieve 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you're really enjoying this video and you like the content that I put out, then please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the red subscribe button and that'll be absolutely awesome. Thank you for doing so and I hope you enjoyed the rest of the video. Oh yeah, where were we? Yeah, that's right. The image looks beautiful through the viewfinder. So I've got my Mamiya 6 set up and I've been taking a few shots with my 75mm lens and my 150mm lens and I've been using Ilford Pan F 50 Plus with a B&W orange filter so I've just set up my camera here and I'm just going to talk you through the composition. 
So this is the composition here. It's a very simple composition. You know, it's got it's got the, the dead branches out in the river and I've arranged them based on the rule of thirds from a compositional point of view. So the twigs are on the right hand side of the image and they're leaning in towards the center. And I just find that that is a very kind of subtle and eye pleasing type of composition for this subject. And with all the mist that's surrounding it, I just think that, you know, it creates this beautiful, a beautiful minimal type image. So I'm just waiting here for the steam to be thick enough behind the image that it blocks the background, but not so much thick in the foreground so I can actually see uh, the tree. Just like that. So we're at f16 and it's 30th of a second and I've set the ISO to the camera to f, sorry ISO 25 and I've also got exposure compensation set to plus two. Now there's good reason for that. Basically I've got this orange filter on the front and um, that requires plus two exposure compensation and because there's lots of steam and you know a camera meter meters to middle grey and I want the steam to be brighter than middle grey I've set my ISO to ISO 25 to add a little bit more uh, exposure compensation so in total we've got plus three exposure compensation. I've been having some fun just taking images around this lake with uh, black and white film <clears throat> and I've been using an orange filter and now I've not used an orange filter before but from the research that I've done it boosts contrasts so it'll be interesting to see how it works in this scene where there isn't too much colour in the steam but yet there's quite a high dynamic range between the steam and the dead um, the dead branches so I've just I've just taken 12 shots and I'm just on my last shot here, so I'm just going to talk you through my composition. So this is what we're working with, and it's a very simple composition. We've got a number of dead branches in the water, and there's quite a lot of steam surrounding it. And I've been timing my exposure so that there's a lot of steam in the back, so I'm getting a lot of tonal separation between the dark dead branches and the steam at the back. And what I mean by tonal separation is I mean that you know, the, the twigs really stand out. So the lens I'm using here is the 150mm lens, which is about 75-80mm on the Mamiya 6, and the f-stop was f8, and the exposure time was 1/30th of a second.
enjoy creating these images and I feel really lucky that I'm able to go out into a landscape, a geothermal landscape, right on my doorstep. I really like the first image. To me, it's simple and quite thought-provoking. And I think the reason why it's thought-provoking is because of the steam and the dead branches. And I find myself looking at the image and wondering what's causing the steam and why the branch is dead and even are they dead? I like Ilford Pan F Plus for this type of image. And I think the ISO 50 of the film really helped with my shutter speed because my Mamiya 6 only has 1 500th of a second for the fastest shutter speed. I'm not sure if the orange filter actually helped with the contrast of this image, but it did help with the shutter speed. It gave me a slower shutter speed which helped smooth out some of the steam, which improved the contrast between the steam and the branches, which gave it a really nice look. The difference in the tones between the branches and the steam stand out really nicely and give nice contrast. And if there is one thing that you can do to improve your photography straight away, that is improve the tonal difference between the main subjects in your images and the background, because that will really make the subjects pop out nicely. The second image was taken with a 75 millimeter lens and the branches are in a different location to the first image. But I do like how the brightness of the steam sits directly behind the branches themselves and that really improves the uh, tonal differences between the dark branches and the steam. I thought the third image showed how well the orange filter can affect the blue sky by making it dark, but I did think that the tonal value of the dark and blue sky was very close to the, the tonal value of the branches and the kind of, you know, the branches fade into the blue sky a little bit. So I think with that image, a filter that actually made the blue sky lighter and the branches darker would have probably worked a lot better and the tonal differences between the branches and the blue sky would have been a lot better. I'm not actually sure if there is a filter that will do that for me, but if you know of one, then please leave a comment in the section down below. I think the third image turned out well. I liked how the steam was the brightest behind the branches again, but I do prefer the simpler first two images. Uh, that's just my personal taste. It'd be great to hear from you which were the images that you liked the best out of the images that I showed in this video and why. Please leave a comment down below. That would be awesome. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Have a great week.